Let's meet her. Misha, let's see, make sure I get this all right. Misha Teresa Tate into our studio from Tacoma, Washington. 29 years of age with an MMA record of 23 and 18. The UFC bantamweight champion of the world. I, I, there's only so long I can go on before I run out of gas here. You've got to sit down. I'm talking all in one breath. Please welcome the amazing, the wonderful Misha Tate. Hi, Hi Misha. Hello. <sighs> I'm Michael. I have you holding my breath, your breath. I'm Michael. <laughs> And that's nice Dave. Hi. Hey, Misha. How are you? Very well. So Great. what brings you to Toronto? You guys. Wow. <laughs> See, you, you have, you, I, I mean, I imagine the spotlight got way huger on you when you went to UFC, but you have learned mm -hmm. that the key to doing an interview is just say, just kiss people's asses, right? And they'll believe right? it because we're all self-absorbed. <laughs> Do I, I got you guys on a roll so far? So far, guys, absolutely. Absolutely. Good? absolutely. Okay, I'm feeling cool. good. Flattery will get you somewhere. Awesome. So seriously, what does what does bring you to Toronto? Uh, well, I'm on a victory tour right now. So just kind of talking about the UFC, talking about women's MMA, and talking about my most recent win where I captured the women's bantamweight world title. What What's the biggest difference in your life, pre and post, capturing that title? Uh, I mean, I feel fulfilled. This is just something that I I had to I had to do. I knew I had to accomplish that, and it's been a a long time dream of mine. So, yeah, I, I think that's the biggest thing is I'm just really really happy. What's the coolest thing you've got to do? Like the coolest opportunity that Hold has on. come your way because you say, are champion. Say this right now. This moment is the coolest. <laughs> Right, right. I already complimented you guys yeah. enough. In the, Keep it, going, right? so, man. But like, worn off. Like, like I got the coolest to go thing to, you can't believe you got to do. Um, I got to go to Australia, and mm -hmm. I thought that was amazing. I got to see Sydney. I got to see the, the Opera House. Isn't, the it, isn't it fantastic? It Darling Harbor, all that. Amazing. amazing. And I got to go surfing, which I've never done mm. before. So I picked the most shark-infested waters to try my yes. hand at surfing. But uh, I came back alive, so I'm okay. Were you well, good at it? Were you good actually, at yeah. It? I got up on the board on my second try. So awesome. They were, yeah. So if if you went one on one with a shark right now, because you said most shark infested waters, right? I mean, you are a grappler, right? That's one of the things that you do. Yeah. Not in the water, though. No, I, I'm thinking, I, but it, unless it was a massive they shark, they punch it in the nose, and I'm like, well, if I miss, then I guess I can stab it in the eye with my stub. <laughs> So. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you, you were faced with not, not something that had quite that much peril, but you were in trouble in your fight against Holly, right? After four rounds, I mean, you were behind on all cards. What, what did your corner say to you uh, between the fourth and fifth round, and what were you thinking? Uh, I remember my boyfriend, Brian Caraway, who's been there since, like, the very day one, and he told me, he's like, just put your head down and Mike Tyson her. That's what he told me, you know, and just get in there. Basically, just get gritty, like make it happen. You've got to finish it this round one way or the other, um, either knock her out or submit her, but you've got to get it going. If, if, if you were to measure what you had left in the tank, because five rounds is, yeah. is a mass. How many times have you gotten five rounds in, in your life? Uh, well, obviously we do that, simulate that a lot in sparring, but I think that that is but the in, in furthest real, in a fight that yeah. I've ever, you know, the deepest that I've ever had to go. I thought so. So if you start with... Uh, a full tank, 10 out of 10. Mm -hmm. And if zero is, I, I, I can't move. I'm just like, I'm done. Where were you after four rounds? That's an interesting question. I never thought about that. Um, and sometimes when you're in the fight, you don't really think about it in the moment. But the, the best assessment I could probably give you was about 50, 60%, you know, 60%. Which is... Of got to be pretty typical yeah you know because you've lost a little bit of explosivity and that just happens you, know, you get like that minute rest and and you're back out there and you're, you're giving it everything you have so i mean i definitely had enough obviously i had enough and my you recover a lot in between those rounds but i think you know a lot of diminishing return <laughs> right and and i would imagine when you do all kinds of cardio right like what yeah. would be typical cardio for you in when you're in uh in approach to what like in final training for a fight Oh, uh, there's a lot of things that I do, but hill sprints is one. You know, you get an anaerobic and uh, aerobic workout, so we have to do b both box jumps, um, a lot of footwork drills. You see the ladders or boxers that, like move their feet really, really quick, or punching. Obviously, uh, MMA is phenomenal cardio, so even sparring, that's actually where I get some of my best conditioning is doing the actual sport itself. We're in conversation with UFC women's bantamweight champion Misha Tate. Misha, in, in the sport of tennis recently, you may have heard there was some controversy about the popularity of the men's sport division versus the women's and one of the tournament directors saying ah oh, the women wouldn't get any popularity if it wasn't for the men they should all get down on their knees and thank god for the fact that rafa nadal and others for federer and such in, in tell me where you think the popularity of men's 
UFC is versus women? Because, again, I am not a hardcore UFC person, but it seems to me I hear as much about you and Holly Holm and Ronda Rousey as I do about the men. Well, this is what's great about our sport is really it's been an equal playing field. And once the UFC decided to bring women, it was like, hey, we're, we're, we're all in. We are going to give them every single opportunity to excel that their male counterparts do. And so we have females headlining the biggest selling pay-per-views ever and we have you know co-headlining and you name it i mean we're out there we were given the equal opportunity and that's all we need is just that, that platform to shine and i think women's mma has excelled because it's exciting it, it, usually it, go out there and, and and fight hard do you ever feel any resentment from from the men's side of thing either organizers or participants or, or is it harmonious behind the scenes well now i, I mean obviously earlier in my career that was a, a much more of an uphill battle and uh, it used to irritate me when I would hear Dana White say, that, you know, it's almost three years that women have been in the UFC. So, but three years ago, he was absolutely staunch on the fact that women would not be in the UFC. Or I shouldn't say fact because obviously it wasn't a fact, <laughs> but mm-hmm. his opinion that women did not belong in the UFC and would never be in the UFC. Every time he was asked about it, it was no, no, no. So, but I mean, that kind of motivated me in a sense. Before I ask you the the, the question that I, I, I think. Um, MMA fans, and and he he's he doesn't watch a ton as, as you just said, but I, I'm a, I'm a UFC fan, and the show that I used to host, I mean, we had Dane on every three yeah. weeks. You were on the show once, um, mm-hmm. and that's when you say, yeah, I remember, it was great, it was awesome. Okay, <laughs> yes, so yes, I remember, it was great, <laughs> awesome. awesome, did I get it? Uh, <laughs> does it? I because you you were talking about the tennis guy who ended up losing his job, but he was talking about women's tennis. They're very attractive. There's a lot of very attractive men. And I was offended by that. I I thought, you know, it's sports. It's not about beauty. Where is the line for you? Um, Because, I mean, you're an an attractive woman. Well, thank you. um, But that, I think, if someone focuses on that, Mm -hmm. takes the focus away from the fact that you're a professional athlete who happens perhaps to be attractive, but not an attractive woman who's a professional athlete because she's attractive right and and that's an always an interesting concept too because this is also an entertainment business you know it's about the sport but it's also about entertainment and I really think that there's nothing wrong with being a strong beautiful empowered woman that kicks ass Am I allowed to say that? Is that okay? Yes. Yeah, he's okay. broken Fred ground well, long yes, ago. I, I have. Um, so anyways, uh, yeah, so, you know, I think that that's good. We're, you know, we're we're marketing something, and if we have, like, you know, attractive people that can do it, then then great. And, you know, it is a fine line to watch. But you, you're right. Sometimes people will maybe tune in for the, you know, quote-unquote wrong reason. Like, oh, you know, this is two hot chicks fighting. We get that a lot. But they're allowed to do that, right? <laughs> right. Like, like absolutely. Like, viewers can, can choose what they want. I think it's how people exactly. approach you. Yes, absolutely. So if, if after a fight, Joe Rogan, instead of doing what he does, if he came into the ring, and this was contentious here because Jeannie Bouchard, who's uh, a, uh, a Canadian tennis player who was top ranked uh, for about a year, was asked... Who would you like to date? And they they asked her to do a little bit of a strut afterwards on on the court. Uh, is that crossing the line in your mind? If in your setting someone had talked to you, well, you know what, it, it looks like you know like you've changed your hair. I suppose it depends on the person. Um, you know, for me, I wouldn't probably want to you know go that far. But that's all a matter of personal preference. And if she was comfortable with it, then fine. Um, you know, but I think when people do tune into our sport for the wrong, re- uh, you know, quote unquote wrong reason, it can actually be a really good thing because it's that something shiny effect. It's like, oh, that caught my eye because of this. And then you watched the girls fight and you're like, holy crap, the- these girls can actually fight. Right. Like, I- I'm a fan of women's MMA. So am I. I'm going to hand you a sheet here. There's two names on it. I want you to circle the one. This is the contract, ultimately, <laughs> with no numbers on it. Okay. Um, it says Holly and it says Rhonda. Circle the one that you would choose to fight right now. Uh, if, if if this was your next fight cutting up, who, oh, yeah, coming for up, sure. she just circled Rhonda. Definitely. Why, why definitely? Unfinished business. Yeah, I, I have to beat her to seal my legacy, you know. Um, I think I have kind of this Rocky Balboa story going on here where I've been really knocked down and then I'm coming back. I'm that comeback fighter. And nobody thought, I went into this fight as a huge underdog. Nobody thought that I was going to be able to pull off the win against uh, against Holly. And I still have more to prove, and that's to prove that I can beat Ronda you, Rousey. You've fought Ronda how many times? Twice. You have not beat her yet, correct? Right. How would you describe the relationship you two have outside of the octagon? Uh... We don't really have one. It's not really great. Um, you know, she likes to stick her middle finger in my face constantly. And that's about the extent of it. <laughs> so we don't, we, we just don't get along. But, you know, outside of, uh, you know, personal dislike for each other, you know, we I respect her as an athlete, definitely. When a match begins, are you aware of the fact that she's not your favorite person? Yeah, of course. You know, it's, it's, it's something that you just, you can't really, like, put out of your mind entirely. But I think once the fight actually gets going, then you're just so focused on 
you're just focused on fighting it. It just becomes a nameless, faceless person, you know? Well, you, you are not nameless and faceless and anything, but <laughs> you, you came up with uh, one of, uh, to me, I mean, it was, it was an amazing fight. Thank and you. I think it's a reason why, why women's UFC, um, for many of us, is more interesting than men's UFC right now. And you had this comeback. You talked about Rocky Balboa. You know, you were down on points <laughs> in the fifth round, and you fought a woman that beat the person that people said no one could ever beat. So um, I, I think it's... Uh, it's pretty awesome to have you here in our studio. 